In a previous video, we saw how to get the vSphere web client installed. So what I've gone ahead and done is just connected to HTTPS localhost on port 9443 to vSphere-client. Now typically what we're going to get is a login. So we're going to provide a login like we normally would with the vSphere client connecting to vCenter. You'll see there is actually a single sign-on plugin you can install in your browser so that you don't need to log in at all but I didn't have that installed and I've already gone ahead and logged in previously. Anyway, I'm logged in as administrator at VCO2. So this whole vSphere web client we have to remember is based on Adobe Flex. So we do need the Flash client installed, which is going to give us support for Adobe Flex. But other than that, we can see it's a pretty well organized, highly detailed environment. It really provides all the features that the normal Windows client connected to vCenter would have. And the layout of all the options are different, and one of the major things you're going to need to do here is familiarize yourself with where everything is. Let's take a tour of it and see. One of the things that's important to remember is that in the future, this is really the direction that the tools are going in, and at a certain point, they're going to phase out the Windows vCenter client, probably really the Windows vCenter service as well, and move towards the Linux appliance with the web-based client. Things like, for example, the new vSphere data protection actually don't plug into the Windows vCenter anymore, and you have to use the vSphere web client if you're going to use them. And you'll see potentially other plugins added here. And if you take a look at the vSphere data protection videos, you'll see some of those details as well. If we click into the administration area, we'll see that we have access to most of the things that we would have had in the homepage vCenter settings on the Windows client. We can manage the roles from here, manage licensing configure single sign-on and discovery for other remote domains and other LDAP directories and so on, and access extensions and health services and so on. Very similar to what we would have had on the Windows client, really, on the home page. And then you'll see as well in the vCenter section itself is where we'll get most of the things that we would typically be looking for. And one of the things that I like is that this whole layout is a little bit better organized, I find, really, than the Windows client. And rather than doing things like the inventory menus that we have within the Windows client and the breadcrumb bars and things like that, we have these inventory lists down the side, which makes it much easier to jump to, you know, for example, the data stores view or something like that, and then go back over to the data centers or the hosts view. I've got one host currently registered with this vCenter anyway for the demos that I'm doing. And if I right click on it, we'll see that it loads the various actions that we would normally see associated with a host through the Windows client. And if we go to all vCenter actions, the things that are not directly listed on the shortcut menu here are available here through the all vCenter actions. And as we can see, really everything that you would need to do and certain things that are a little faster and easier to do from here. And like I said, in a lot of ways, the layout, although it's different, in some ways is kind of a little bit better organized and provides you faster and easier access to some of the things you might be looking for, even if you might have to find a new place to look for them coming over from the Windows client. So we can do most of the things that we would expect to be able to do with hosts. If we come back here, we might actually prefer to go into the hosts and clusters view. And then we see more of the traditional view that we would expect in the Windows client anyway. So if I go over to a virtual machine, for example, again, we can right click on it and get access to, you know, really all the actions that we would need. Let's take a little bit of a look at settings and some of the reporting and things that we can do. So if we go to a host, then you'll see over in the center section here, we've got a summary page. Well, we've got a getting started page and you know, much like we can do in the Windows client, we can get rid of that and just close it. We'll see on the summary page, we get some details, you know, much like we do again in the Windows client, hardware details, some utilization details, information about configurations and so on, and pretty much what we had in the Windows client. If we head over to monitor, we'll have access to things like the logs, quick information about the various alarms that have been set off, some performance details available there. Again, very much like we would see in the Windows client, change some resource allocation details and get access to some storage reports and view any tasks that have been run recently here or that are currently running and, you know, events and hardware status. And if we want to get into the various settings and the configuration of that host, if we go over to manage, see that we have a settings area for most of the common settings that we would normally be looking for. But if you remember the Windows client, we've got all these settings here, but certainly networking and storage settings are much more complex and we're going to spend more time there. In the web client, those are actually broken out as separate tabs. And we can see, again, slightly different layout. We get a better view of the switches and the adapters and so on that we had in certain ways compared to what we had before in the Windows client.
One of the things I do like as well, compared to the maps in the Windows version, is that when you go to related objects, it is easier to see what's tied to this. In this case, you know, I can see various types of top level objects focused on virtual machines, or, you know, I can see templates might be associated with it, or apps and data stores and networks and so on. We've got a recent tasks window over here, some work in progress things that we can do. It's actually like a little notepad where we can put some details about what's going on. And we can also see alarms that are going on and acknowledge them or clear them out as need be. And we've got some navigation controls up here to help us jump between the different areas, but we've also got, you know, quite a few different ways to move back and forth through all the different levels of the inventory. If we look at a virtual machine itself, again, very similar. If we go over to the summary page, we can get quite a bit of detail about what's happening for its resource utilization, hardware, and, you know, other configuration details. We can get access to its console from here. If we go over to monitor, we'll see that we can do alarm management from here access performance charts, set up resource allocations and so on, and its tasks and events. And if we go over to manage, then we get access to really all the various settings for it as well. So we can go back to the home page if we need to, go through vCenter and get access to some of the different views that way. But once we get into one of these views, you'll see we have hosts and clusters, VMs and templates, storage and networking. You'll see that there are actually icons provided for that across the top of this window. And we also have an actions drop down here that we can go in and do a lot of the actions associated with the object in addition to right clicking on them. I guess potentially if you're on a machine that doesn't do the right click thing, if you're using a Mac or something like that, you're going to need to use a machine that supports Adobe Flex. That doesn't really mean that we can connect directly to this website with, you know, an iPad and expect it to work. But there is also a VMware client for iPad as well that we can use that's not based on the web client, but doesn't really have all of the functionality that we would need to fully manage an environment, whereas this vSphere web client does, and this is going to be the standard administration tool moving forward with VMware. I've really just kind of shown you the basics to orient you a little bit as to where things are located. Take a look at it, practice doing some of the things that you've seen in the other videos in the web client, and also keep in mind too, if you need to publish this outside of your firewall, then in this case I've installed it on my vCenter, but we don't need to do that, and setting up another machine that might have different security policies associated with it, and maybe different network filtering and everything else could be a good idea. And potentially as well, you may have other vCenters that you want to register with it. If you're using vCenter 5.0 machines, you'll actually see as well, if you go into the start menu and go over to the shortcuts, that there's an administration tool that goes along with this as well, which really is the same URL, but instead of vSphere-client is admin-app, and it'll let you register other vCenter 5 servers in here. If you're going to do 5.1 servers, then you can really just add them normally through the interface. 